Good evening all and welcome to another video on All How That Ale. Tonight we are doing another one of these kind of comparison videos. It's another supermarket showdown and you've all already clicked on the video so you know exactly which one it is. We are doing another session of New England IPAs and the beers in question are this one from Magic Rock and Salt. It is the Ripe Times Double Dry Hop New England IPA. And it weighs in at 6.5% ABV. And its opponent across the ring in the blue corner is this one. It's love and hate from vocation. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows it very, very well indeed. And it weighs in at 7.2% ABV. And I've picked these two because, again, they got the same score from me on Untapped. And I want to separate them because, as I said, in the first instance, uh, we've got no real nuance no subtlety in the scores on uh, Untapped, you know. So beers that I, I rate the same, I want to sort of differentiate between one way or another. And we're going to test it on five different areas. We're going to go for the, uh, the pour and appearance. We're going to go for the aroma. We're going to go for the body of the beer, the flavour and the finish and see which one wins overall out of those five little pillars of, uh, of testing. So... Why not start where we mean to begin? Right at the very beginning, let's crack some open and see what we get. Now, I don't have any magic rock or salt glassware, so we're gonna pour that one into a tiny rebel glass today. Put that down. Helps forget the beer to open, really, doesn't it? Anyway. Let's see what the pour is like. So. It is hazy. Lively, bit of a ship, or if I do say so myself, and the glass could do with a little bit of cleaning. But what have we got? We have got a slightly hazy golden colored beer with good amount of carbonation culminating in a solid two fingers of white blancmange like head. You know, so it, it represents New England well. I like them a lot. I like the murky. This one is it's, it's murkier than many, but not as murky as some. And it looks good in my eyes. I enjoy it. Anyway, so that is that one. We're gonna, we'll quickly get the vocation pause so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison and uh, see what we get. There we go. That was a bit of a, uh, an excited opening. So we're pouring into the vocation glass for this one. And this one is similar, similar level of haze. See if we can uh, encourage a good head on it, but not masses. So there we are. So we have a little bit more murk on this one. It is similar in color. We've got a bit of fridge haze going on as well. We've got a, a white head that isn't quite as tight and compact as per the Magic Rock Salt offering from right or right times from Magic Rock and Salt, should I say? Um, but you know, it looks good. It it typifies the style well. You've got that decent level of murk and a similar colour across many, many New England IPAs. So, side by side. So we've got this one and we've got this one. Which one do you think looks better? Which one? So we've got the, uh, the ripe times on my right hand and we've got the vocation love and hate on the left. I prefer the colour of the ripe times, but overall, you know, the, the murkiness of the love and hate wins for me. So on appearance, I prefer the head and the color of right times the murkiness of the, uh, the love and hate. It's difficult. I'll call that one on as even. They both, they both look good. Um, we see the head is dissipating on the, uh, on the right times quite well. You know, it was a bit of a, a pants paw, but on the whole, they both look good. So I'm going to say on is even on that one. I prefer the colour slightly though on this one. If it was a bit murkier, it would be a clear win for the old right times. But <clears throat> one all. Well, we'll call it a, a, a no score draw so far. So <clears throat> we're going to go for the aromas next. We're going to start with the love and hate. So straight in we go. Ah, yes. Mango. Stone fruit. Pineapple. little tiny hint of something citrusy 
but on the whole, lots and lots of stone fruit and beer, pineapple. Very, very nice indeed for the old love and hate. For the ripe times, we're just gonna add a little, tiny bit more to the glass, just so we're up a similar height from the schnoz. It's a lot lighter on the Roma than the love and hate. Um, we have got stone fruit, we have got citrus, we've got a little bit of peach coming through on this one. It smells good, but nowhere near as strong as the love and hate. So, we have the first point going to love and hate. One nil for the love and hate after two rounds. So, the next test is a body test. So we're gonna start with the lighter offering from Ripe Times, which is 6.5% ABV. So, in we go. It's medium, it's soft, it's smooth, it's velvety. It's decent, you know, it's typical of the style. It's exactly what you expect from a New England IPA and it does it well. Let's go for the old uh, love and hate. It's a little bit thicker. Not a lot. We're, we're talking sort of marginal differences. Um, think photo finish, that kind of thing. It's slightly sharper and that, that gives a little bit of a, a cleaner mouth feel. Um, it's another point to the love and hate on that one. So that's 2-0 uh, after three rounds. So we, we can't have ripe times win. We can get a score draw, 2-2. Two, two, and uh, let's go straight in for the flavors, shall we? So we're gonna start again on the flavors with the ripe times. And this is where it can be really won or lost. You've got sweet stone fruit like overripe stone fruit. You've got a bit of mango, you've got pineapple, sort of sweetening up the whole deal. You've got such a smooth delivery as well. A little bit of citrus on there and that, that little bit of lip smacking, it's lovely. It's, it's not particularly strong in terms of flavor, but th that hoppy nature, given that it's double dry hopped, is really there. It's so, well balanced as well. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's one I can sit and drink to the cows come home. You don't really get any sign of the uh, the six and a half percent either. It's so smooth and well hidden. It's lovely, and it's a really kind of balanced, mellow, fruity profile. No one flavour kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. It is superb. Onto the love and hate. Now with this one, you know that it's stronger. You can taste that bit of alcohol. It's it's not in your face, but it is more obvious. It's not hidden in any way, shape or form. And I appreciate that. I like to know when I'm drinking a stronger drink. The flavors, they're a little bit greener. I think it's like underripe stone fruit. It's punchier, it's it's more intense. And depending on what you like, you know, you're obviously gonna favor one over the other. Again, the delivery is smooth, not quite as smooth as the right times, but there's a slight earthiness to it as well. Not savory, just like an earthy, fresh, kind of green hop and it's it could be that it's uh, a bit young this beer yet um, check the can date what we got what we got uh, best before end is uh, January 2021 I don't know what what age they put or, or what sort of shelf life they put on it but it, it tastes green it tastes very fresh it could do with a little bit longer, just maturing and mellowing out a little. Mm. Don't get me wrong, it's absolutely delicious, but I think it just needs a little bit of, a little bit of length on it. You know, it's a bit green. So for me, 
flavour. It's won by the rap time. So it's clawed one back. It's 2-1. So we come to the final round of the uh, supermarket showdown number two uh, between love and hate and ripe times and we've got just the finish to go what do i prefer as i said in the previous video i like my beer bitter hoppy resinous in your face but i do love a new england ipa so all of that really goes out the window here this is all about smooth sort of sweet stone fruit you know i'm not expecting any sort of long bitter finishes or anything like that so don't expect it otherwise you'll be disappointed in a new england ipa we're going to start with the ripe times and see what we get mm. the flavor is sublime the finish starts out sweet stays sweet you get that stone fruit, that really ripe, sort of, sort of puree type stone fruit flavours. It's delicious, it's reasonably long, and you've got that beautiful sort of benefit of the double dry hopping. It just follows through into the finish quite nicely. It's not often that following through is a good thing, but on this finish, it's wonderful. And uh, last but not least, Go for the love and hate. The finish on love and hate. Again, it starts out slightly sharper. You've got that more intense green hop. It's a cleaner, drier finish than the uh, the ripe times. That's not necessarily a bad thing or a good thing. It just is what it is. It's not quite as long, but a def again, that green under ripe sort of fruit flavors are coming through and for me I prefer the finish of ripe times I do it's sweeter it's a little bit more kind of enjoyable and it's just yeah it's it's exactly what you expect from the finish of a good beer you know it, it makes you want to go for another one and I've done it many times with the old ripe times and with the love and hate to be fair and um, they both got the same score for me on untapped which was 4.75 uh, that's why I've pulled them together for this sort of comparison just to see what's what and it seems that we can't separate them you know we got the uh, we got score draw on the appearance the the aromas I preferred the uh, the love and hate the it, the flavor yeah the body the body is is one by love and hate the finish and the flavour is one by ripe times. And, you know, it's it's to all at the end of it. But some people might say, okay, I, I prefer to put in a little bit of emphasis on the flavour. If so, then the ripe times would win. If some people just sort of don't think that way, you can end up with score draw. Some people might just prefer one over the other. And that's, that's all this is. You know, it's just a bit of fun for my part just to uh, determine which one I prefer. But, yeah, you know... They scored the same, both on Untapped in and in this uh, fun five-part drama. Um, five-part drama? No, five-part test. It's not really drama, is it? It's beer. Come on, we don't need drama in beer. It, there's, there's enough of that in the world already. Um, you know, and if we want to have a bit more drama, Iron Maiden, best band in the world, um, fight me. Convince me to change my mind. Show me some other bands. Anyway, yeah, it's been a fun one. I enjoy these beers a lot, and I've drunk more Love and Hate and Ripe Time. Well, certainly I've drunk more of this because it's been around longer than I have with the old Ripe Times. So I've enjoyed every single one of them that I've had, and I will continue to do so whilst they both exist on the supermarket shelves and anywhere else I might be able to find them. But on this rarest of times, we find them on the score draw, 2-2. Two, two. There we are. So we're at the point in the video where it makes it very difficult for me to do because I've got a can in each hand, but somewhere down there are some buttons. You know exactly what to do with them at this point. We've got the like, comment, dislike, and subscribe. Choose any combination of them as you wish. Let me know in the comment section if you've tried either of these beers and what you think of them. And on that note, I'm gonna go and enjoy the rest of these two and get the video up for you to hopefully enjoy and uh, learn something a little bit new. On that note, I'll catch you later.